And every Monday, of course, on our lifestyle segment, we focus on your health. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we are glad you're watching. Today we're talking about allergies. And joining us in studio is Dr. Boris Tikand, who is uh, uh, from the Allergy Clinic Nairobi Diagnostic Laboratory. And uh, we'll talk about the different kinds of allergies. And if you have a question, our phone numbers will be on your screen. You can call in and engage with us throughout uh, this show. Um, Dr. Tari, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And let's start by breaking down what allergies are and the effects they have, and also perhaps talking to us about the different types. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first thing to understand is what is an allergy, an allergy yeah. and what happens when you have an allergic reaction. I think the first thing to understand is that a normal individual will come across something in their environment that they may breathe in mm -hmm. or something that they eat which is usually very innocent and they have no reaction whereas a person who is allergic will have a reaction to something innocent like a bit of milk or hen's egg or a bit of cat allergen in the environment okay. and then become sick and have an exaggerated response the mm -hmm. body makes an exaggerated response to something that's very innocent mm -hmm. for another for a normal individual so that's what an, constitutes an allergic an reaction. Allergic. Um, and in terms of how it presents and how it manifests mm -hmm. then, it can be in a number of different ways, mm -hmm. maybe acute with a, an, an immediate reaction or something that's chronic and that goes on and on and on mm -hmm. um, and give chronic troublesome symptoms. Okay. And we'll be seeing some of the pictures, like what we have on screen now, on the split screen. Talk to us about what we're seeing. Yeah. So that's eczema, mm -hmm. um, which is very, very common, especially in young children and infants, um, where they have dry, itchy skin patches mm -hmm. um, in different parts, and some children outgrow it, and some children continue uh, to persist with it into adulthood, mm -hmm. and it affects uh, adults and children. Yeah. Um, in children, it tends to be caused mainly by food allergy. Right. And in older children, food and environmental allergies oh. can cause um, and can, can cause eczema. And we'll talk about the different types of allergies, but how does one identify and get to know that I'm having an allergic reaction or this is an allergy? So you've got your classical allergic uh, reaction to something that you may have. So you may eat something and come up with a rash and say, well, uh, I'm having an allergic reaction, mm -hmm. which most people recognize. Okay. Um, there are other conditions which are chronic, which the background is an underlying allergy. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones which are often missed. Things like asthma, eczema, runny noses, upper airway allergies, mm -hmm. skin allergies, um, and gut problems, so people with children with chronic constipation mm -hmm. and things like that. So allergies where you may have an acute reaction to something that's happened and then you're able to say, yes, I'm having an allergic reaction. I've been bitten by a bee, I've been stung by a bee, and I'm now having a reaction. That is an acute reaction. You know what's going mm -hmm. on. You will tell me I've had an allergic reaction. Yeah. But if you've got a child with asthma, the background is an allergy. It's being caused by an allergy. And that's where we're missing. That's where children are being missed and okay. adults are being missed and not being treated and handled correctly. So what about when you don't know, when it's not outright clear that I don't know that it's a bee, uh, you know, it stung me, so this is an allergic reaction. Yes. What if it's something that I inhaled or whatever and I don't Absolutely. know that that happened and then there's this reaction and I think I have some condition. So what happens in those kind of situations? Those, those patients actually need to be assessed. Mm -hmm. They need to be sent for testing. We test for those, the environmental, the dietary allergens, or other allergens, which can also cause similar problems. Okay. Maybe drugs, cosmetics, um, medication, any number of other things. Mm. So there, there has to be fully, each patient has to be fully assessed. Which one are the most common um, allergies? Um, in terms of the things that cause allergies, um, which are called allergens, yeah. which are pro tend to be proteinous things that are made from proteins. Mm -hmm. um, you've got food allergens, things that one is eating regularly, um, and also diet, I mean environmental allergens, so things mm -hmm. that you're breathing in. They're microscopic, you can't see them. They're small, tiny, microscopic yeah. particles that we are breathing in or coming into contact with with the skin and then bringing out these reactions. Yeah, there are people who eat um, eggs, say like, you know, and get that's some right. reactions, some scratches, spots. What's going on there in that situation? So that's the eczema that we 
we talked about okay. in terms of all the different um, in terms of their yeah. skin reactions. All right. And so these are the foods, um, the different types of foods. It, it depends on what you are eating and drinking as an individual. All right. So we spend a lot of time taking a history about what you are eating and drinking mm -hmm. so that we can test appropriately. There's no point testing you for celery and sesame when that's not in your diet. You, if you're eating, if we're eating maize and beans and beef and eating githeri, then that's what we need to be testing mm. for, for the correct and appropriate allergens in our diet, All in right. our local diet. Um, so we have a uh, number of types of allergies. Talk to us about skin allergies. So we talked about eczema, yeah. which is by far one of the most common skin allergies. You also can have swellings under the skin, which can be superficial, like mm -hmm. hives. So that's called urticaria. And one can also have deeper skin swellings, where you get swell swelling of the lips and swelling of different parts of the body, swellings that, and that's called angioedema. And that's also very common. Mm -hmm. um, and that has some, some of those conditions are allergic and some are non-allergic. So they have to be, those patients have to be fully assessed. All right, and then there's environmental. Yes. Allergies as well. So the environmental allergies tend to affect the upper airways and the lower airways, mm -hmm. as well as sometimes we also see skin manifestations. Um, so I'm talking about people with the itchy, itchy eyes, itchy nose, itchy ears, itchy throat, mm. sinus problems, blocked nose, running nose, morning sneezing. And then, of course, we're talking about lower airways. So asthma, difficulty in breathing, shortness mm. of breath, with exercising, nighttime cough in children. Yeah. So that's Wh what. What is this we have now? So these are the different environmental allergens that yeah. can cause these problems, whether they're indoor allergens and some are outdoor allergens. So some of the pollens and uh, uh, molds may be outdoor, grasses are outdoor. Mm -hmm. You've got lots of molds and dust mites and uh, pets, which would be indoors, and cockroach and other allergens, which we also test for, yeah. which are there are people who are uh, allergic to dust, any dusty place, then they're coughing and sneezing a lot. Um, is it, then what do you do? Do you just... It's, there, there are a number of things. We, we spent sort of 45 minutes with each patient explaining how to remove or reduce allergen content mm -hmm. in the household. So, so one isn't essentially allergic to house dust. It's the mites that live in the dust. So there are okay. small microscopic insects called house dust mites. I think this is the first the one first, on the um, image. Okay. It looks like a, it's, it's a small, tiny little, almost like a little tiny cockroach that's cockroach. invisible. And it lives indoors in the house dust. Right. And that's one thing that people can be allergic to. Mm. So you're not essentially allergic to the dust. It's something that's in the dust, living in the dust. In the dust. So um, not all dust then will be bad for one. <laughs> no. Be like, Never dust no. anywhere there's dust. And yes. No, this is indoor dust. Okay. Indoor dust is there. Uh, and food, of course, also a big one. I've mentioned the eggs yes. and some people will not eat certain foods. Um, yeah. Can those kind of allergies be cured after the doctor has been able to figure out what kind once, of foods are Once good? you have identified what it is that people are allergic to in the diet, then we advise elimination for certain periods of time. Right. Some will outgrow and we can almost fool the body into forgetting that there is an allergy. Others persist. So it's about monitoring those patients. And one of the things that we are often having to deal with is patients who have had multiple things taken out of their diets for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And then you end up having people, children with nutritional deficiencies and all sorts because they've not been tested. They're not, they, things have just been taken out. Essential nutrients are removed from children's diets. Okay. And insect stings, um, and perhaps with this one, I'd also want to know, uh, are they deadly? C could some, you know, result to death, even any of the other allergies? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, Different people re will react to different things mm -hmm. in a different way. So you may have a mild reaction or a moderate reaction or the severe to life-threatening reactions. And that's obviously what people are concerned about is anaphylaxis, this life-threatening allergic reaction. Um, and that's why it is really important to be assessed, mm -hmm. have the correct information, and then 
for people with anaphylaxis, we always recommend that they carry an EpiPen, which is an adrenaline auto injector. You can give it to yourself, and that's life saving treatment that you oh. give to yourself or the parents can give to But those are people you said with what? With the life threatening reactions that, okay. that one could die from. And what if they don't know that they have those kind of life threatening reactions? Usually they will have had severe reactions before in the past. Okay. So those are the people who need to be managed. It's the same thing with the nut, peanut allergics and mm -hmm. the people who may eat something and have profound reactions. They must be given EpiPens to carry. Um, and the people who find that there will be um, allergic to certain types of makeup, um, talk to us about cosmetics, cosmetics and perhaps also drugs as well. Yes, I, I think cosmetics are um, tested in a slightly different way to mm -hmm. Where the way we test for environmental and dietary allergens. They're tested for differently. Um, and the way they react with the skin is a slightly different mechanism to the other allergic reactions, mm -hmm. but certainly just as important. And we see people who come in with scarring skin rashes and things as a result of using some cosmetics, mm -hmm. having, and drugs as well. We see a lot of patients who've been given antibiotics frequently and they ended up, end up becoming sort of allergic to some antibiotics yes. and other medications. Okay, so for makeup, um, when somebody realizes they're allergic, is it, uh, then can one be helped through diagnosis to realize it's this particular brand or type and then still Ingredients, use yes. The so ingredients. it's usually ingredients Within In the within the different makeups and shampoos and okay. different things. Um, in terms of it being genetic, can you have a family that has a certain allergic reaction that's just running across the family line? So yes, allergic reactions um, and allergies tend to run in families. There is a genetic um, uh, hereditary factor involved. If none of your parents are allergic, then you've got a 10 to 20 percent chance mm -hmm. of being allergic. Yeah, um, we have some images, some images there. there. Um, and I think if if one if one parent has an allergy, then you've got a 20 to 40 percent okay. chance. Um, and a sibling would give you a 30 percent chance of having an of risk of having an allergy in that child. Okay. Um, if both the parents are allergic, it's up to 60%. Mm -hmm. And if both parents have the same allergy, for example, if they both have a skin allergy, then the child has a 72% risk of having a skin allergy as wow. well. Wow, okay. So it's quite significant. And yeah. 30 to 40% of the population will have an allergic or will suffer from an allergic from condition. From some form of allergic reaction. Uh, we have Julius calling us uh, from Nairobi. Julius, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Great, thanks for calling. Go ahead with your contribution. Yes, I am a Catholic priest and I was at the age, at the age of seven to eight there and skin rashes. Sorry, let's have some more volume. Uh, would you kind of repeat what you just said? I had a skin uh, um, problem mm -hmm. and this is like an analogy because after the rains and before the rains I used to have skin rimples coming out and then after that I rise the skin rushes and then swells. It is swell. So I thought that was an allergy that from the from the rain cold or mm -hmm. fourteen my skin developed something they are talking to there as vitrigo. Vitrigo I've gone places, I've gone to US, I've gone to Egypt, I've gone to places that I've never gotten an MS cure. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking the cat, do we have any cure on vitrigo? Is it an allergy? Is it a life threatening? Vitiligo? Vitiligo. 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 Is it an allergy? Is that a result of what was happening at the early age of my life? Or yeah. is it what? Because now I have never seen any cure on that. All right, Julius. Thank you for watching. And uh, we uh, have another caller online. Salma, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thank you. I have an allergy. I have an allergy. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
sasa niliambiwa hiyo ni allergy niko nayo na sofa sijajua ni nini nafanya hiyo allergy inakuwa juu vitu mingi zenye anatumia sijui ni gani naweza kuenda kuna All right. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. Asante sana uh, kwa kupiga simu. Um, so let's begin with Julius and he yes. was uh, vitiligo and trying to figure out whether it's a form of allergy. Um, vitiligo is not an allergic skin condition. It is a skin condition where the skin becomes very light mm -hmm. and it stops produce that doesn't produce um, the pigment the skin pigment right um, and it is it tends to be an autoimmune condition so that's mm -hmm. a different it's a different type of of skin condition mm -hmm. it tends not to be allergic saying that some people with skin allergies because they may scratch and damage their skin mm -hmm. damage the skin and those patches which are damaged may not have or oh, they will have deep be lighter than the rest of the other skin patches because or even darker some from scarring so if the diagnosis is vitiligo and it's correct then it is not an allergic skin condition mm. but deep pigmented patches can happen in allergic skin conditions if there is an underlying skin allergy all right does um, that make sense okay sama also talking about uh, after eating she gets this um, irritation on yes. her throat and so she even described the kind of sound she uh, makes and then a few minutes after that she has her ears aching as well yes. yeah this sounds very much like a, a patient with allergies one would need to sit down and do a full assessment mm -hmm. do the skin prick testing and look at the environmental and the dietary factors right. and then and then so some of them you need to see an expert to take you through the various tests I would think uh, so. to be able yes. to determine what exactly it is um the allergy you're suffering from because it as dr Harry says here it's clearly uh, is an allergy is fever a regular sign of allergy uh, fever is not a sign of an allergic process going on but mm -hmm. If you've got an underlying allergy and everything is inflamed, maybe mm. your airways um, or your skin, it is at risk of becoming infected. Okay. And then you can have a fever as a result of secondary infection. Mm -hmm. um, and we do often find that people will come in with recurrent sinusitis, recurrent colds, recurrent pneumonias, recurrent chest infections. They are allergic and once you manage their allergies, they get less frequent infections. Mm. All right. Okay, we have another caller, Philip, uh, from Nanyuki. Philip, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Great, thanks for calling, go ahead. Yes, uh, I was asking. Mm -hmm. uh, I have allergy medication for medication. Sorry? Hello? Yes, we can hear you, go ahead. I have an allergy on, on certain medication. Okay. Yes, I was asking uh, how can I go about it or how can I know the, the what kind of medication should I take so that I don't have allergy. You said you have medication, you have an allergy and already have medication? Yes, yeah, some medication. Um, so have you been told how to take the medication or what exactly do you need to find out about your medication? Okay, previously I was told uh, all the medicines that I've got so far. Sorry, hello? Yes, we can hear you. The medication you've gotten? Uh, that have got sulfur. That has got sulfur in it. Hello? Okay, the medication has sulfur. Yes. Uh, so, what is the problem exactly? We need to understand the question clearly so we can give you the answer. Yes, uh, how should I go about Is it something you're allergic to as well, what the medication has, or what is your concern? Yes, the what type of medication I should take. The kind of medication to take, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we also have, I understand, another caller. Okay. Huh? We have another caller. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Who are we talking to? And uh, tell us your question. Uh, go ahead with your question. Yes, um, good morning. Yes, good morning. Yes, uh, my name is Anna, and I have a question about um, a child who is uh, chronically constipated. And I had the doctor say something about that being an allergy. Could you please explain a little bit more? Did you get that? Sure. All right. Thank you, Anna. 
for the question. So for Philip, I think because it wasn't very clear, um, he was talking about having an allergy and having medication and that it has sulfur. I guess it's an issue of him really again getting clear indication from the doctor where how to go with that absolutely i think um well, while we're talking about medication and the use of medication mm -hmm. for treating allergies um one needs to always understand from one's doctor what one is taking mm -hmm. whether it's an antihistamine which is an anti-allergy anti-allergy treatment mm -hmm. or whether they're being given steroids steroids are not to be used long term unless directed by your doctor and I think a lot of people are popping celestamine and other steroids and prednisolone and all sorts and applying steroid creams all over their bodies without realizing what the side effects of these things are mm -hmm. so that's one side of things I think we need to we need to know as individuals mm -hmm. what we are taking we need to understand why we're taking it and use it correctly yeah um, the other side of it which he talked about sulfur um, sulfur drugs like any medication right. can cause allergic reactions in a, in, in, a, in a susceptible individual right. so if you are at risk of developing allergies and you are taking lots of sulfur drugs you are quite at risk of developing a self allergy and then would have to avoid that medication I'm not sure if I got the rest of his question, but I, yeah. I hope that answers some of it. Some I mean, if he it. wants, he can call back and we can okay. try and address. Um, the next Anna, patient, Anna, yes. patient uh, the child with the chronic constipation. In a child with chronic constipation, we, and we see a huge number of them in, in clinic, um, we do find that it is incredibly important to do the skin prick testing for food allergens and then it's followed up with a special type of a diet called an elimination rechallenge diet mm -hmm. and it's a very specifically set uh, an individually set diet right. for a short period of time where we take out the things we suspect and then we bring them back systematically to confirm our our suspicions mm. um, and it is often in that where we find a huge amount of success constipation in a large number of patients can be caused by an allergy. So it can be caused by an and allergy. It, and then we can actually move away from constantly using laxatives and, you know, lots of different medications and being in hospital for mm. disimpactions and things. So, okay. yes. All right, our time is up, but lots of questions, of course, are who could still have windows watching us. Where can they find you? Uh, we're at the Allergy Clinic in Upper Hill Medical Center okay. um, on Rolf Bunch Road. Mm. And happy to to see yeah because see I think what I'm with allergies they need to be specific to each particular person just because we may be having the same rea uh, reaction or kind of a condition on the skin we cannot quite take the same medication no absolutely need to go from there uh, for, for check a full a full assessment a has full to be assessment made. all right thank you dr. Boris thank Karen. you very much good having you on set with thank us um, allergies this morning that's what we've been talking about and you can find them at the Upper Hill Medical Center Yes. What floor? First floor. First floor. Yes. Um, and uh, for any consultations you may want to make. And for the entire show, and also your feedback uh, earlier on, on the way it is, quite a lot uh, that you had to say today. I um, mean, as far as some of the contribution we had from our guest, Benjin Dolo and uh, Ambrose Weda, um, and I will be retweeting and just reading out some of them. I don't know if I have time to do that. Um, I understand not. So we'll thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow. We have a great show. Uh, for you, person of interest will be coming up and of course our lifestyle segment on behalf of the great team that made the show possible. Thank you again. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a lovely day.